right, you guys are getting close to being ready for big quiz number three. Hey, I had a clip on there about international capital flows, and we talked about that a little bit when I was still with you last week. And uh, those international capital flows, capital inflows and capital outflows, I think everybody got and they understood how that uh, affected things in the foreign exchange market. Remember, we had done the reciprocal foreign exchange market, the foreign exchange market for dollars, and then the foreign exchange market for the foreign currency. In this case here, I have the Japanese yen. And what I wanted to highlight here for you is this. And we talked about this before. Why do they demand dollars in the foreign exchange market? What, what, is the, what is the purpose? They don't want dollars just to have dollars. The Japanese that are demanding dollars in the foreign exchange market, they want dollars so that they can buy U.S. goods, services, and assets. Now, what do we call it when a Japanese citizen buys a U.S. produced good or service? What is that from the U.S. perspective? That's a U.S. export. X. What is it called when a Japanese citizen buys a U.S. asset? Remember, physical or financial asset. That's a U.S. capital inflow. So really, when we think about this, this demand curve is X plus KN, exports plus capital inflows. Now, remember the supply curve. It was kind of interesting because of the reciprocal market. That's really connected to the demand curve, the demand for Japanese yen. Because the U.S. citizens are supplying their dollars and willing to exchange those to get Japanese yen. So that supply curve, why do they want Japanese yen? They want to get Japanese stuff. So this supply curve represents the U.S. demand for Japanese goods, services, and assets. Again, from the U.S. perspective, what do we call it? If a U.S. citizen buys a Japanese good or service, that's an import. We use M there. Now, if a U.S. citizen buys a Japanese asset, that's capital outflow. Because we have capital flowing to Japan to purchase that financial asset or physical asset. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. If you go down here to the equilibrium quantity, where the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded, what's true at that point is that M plus K out, the quantity of imports, quantity of capital outflow, is going to be equal to the quantity of exports, the value of the exports, I shouldn't say quantity, but the value of the exports plus capital inflow. And you go, wait, who, 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 what are you talking about, Mika? Who cares? Who cares? Hey, let's do a little bit of math here, and what do we find? If I subtract M from both sides and subtract K in from both sides, we end up with K out minus K in equals X minus M. You still might be saying, so what, Beacom? Who cares? Well, K out minus K in is net capital outflow. Our capital outflows minus capital inflow. That's net capital outflow, NCO here. Also sometimes called net foreign investment, depending on which textbook you might be looking at. So net foreign investment, sometimes that term makes a little sense for some people, or net capital outflow. How much money has left our country to finance uh, some portfolio investment or some foreign direct investment? And what's that equal to? X minus M, exports minus imports, that's net exports. So that's the interesting thing that comes out of this is that at equilibrium, we have this condition that the net capital outflow equals net exports. This is what we call the balance of payments. Okay, sorry, I had to take a little bit of a break there. But the idea was NCO equals NX, and that's the balance of payments. That is to say that if we sell a good to China or Japan, that's a U.S. export. That means that somewhere a Japanese citizen has exchanged to get the dollars that they needed to buy that. So there's some yen out there in the foreign exchange markets. And maybe there's a U.S. citizen who has those yen. Now, why did they get those yen? They might want to buy a Japanese good or service. So one of the ways that this could balance out here 
is that if our exports go up, well then perhaps our imports go up. And that would keep net exports the same. Sometimes though, maybe they don't want to buy. Maybe they don't want to buy a good or service. Maybe they want to buy an asset. So we could have an increase in exports, which to keep this equation the same could be offset by an increase in capital outflow. Now that's really kind of an interesting thing and there's another way of presenting this whole idea of NCO equals NX and that is that the balance of payments I said is the concept but sometimes we refer to KA and CA. KA is capital account and the capital account is a little bit different than NCO. In fact it's the reverse, it's the opposite. Because what it is, is it's K in minus K out. So it's a little bit different there. Well, not a little bit different, it's the exact opposite. Okay? Current account, for all intensive purposes, current account is net exports. It's the net exports, X minus M. Now, there are a few details there where we have unilateral transfers. Unilateral transfers being like some foreign aid or some gift given uh, or remittances that maybe a family sends back. Those kinds of things, though, are relatively small for most countries. And so the current account really for, you know, maybe to be precise, we'll say approximately net exports, but very close. So we're going to just say that for now. Now, if K NCO equals NX and the capital account is the opposite, KN minus K out, then what we find is this, KA, capital account, minus CA, I'm sorry, not minus, but plus CA, equals zero. That's the balance of account, which means that if we have a current account surplus, what does that mean? A trade surplus, net exports is positive. If we have a current account surplus, then we must have a capital account deficit. So that would be negative in the same magnitude. Now over here, since NCO is net capital outflow, K out minus K in, it's not negative. They're equal. But over here, since we're adding those up, this is the more traditional form of looking at the international payments. Capital account, current account. If you've got a current account deficit, you have to have a capital account surplus. Capital account deficit, you've got to have a current account surplus. So I just wanted to get that across to you. Hopefully that will help you out. It's in the notes there, but uh, you might want to practice that a little bit on the practice big quiz. Good luck.